Hey, people, Zarthwomp here, and welcome to episode 32 of Raincoat Blind. Last time, we continued our investigation in disguise, only this time, we were disguised as the other girls in the friend group. We were going around asking questions. We started off as the, as the class, for, as the club president, then we basically switched over to the, the, the snooty yandere girl, not, not to yandere girl, basically the, the snooty, basically... Kamidure girl, I think she, I think she may be Kamidure or more Sundere. But anyways, we basically the other girl who's in the play, and now we are s cold girl. So, anyways, let's get going. I just want to check something. Okay, yeah, I just want to do a quick check on the volume with the music. Okay, I know I'm paranoid about this, but just. The thing is, the, this with this project, the audio has been really weird, especially with the lines, because basically the voice volume is not exactly the best when it comes to just seeing, oh hey, it, what is the volume levels like on the voice? Because basically, for example, Seth's voice was really do it was really doing a number on my on OBS where it was borderlining 20, which is much higher than I'm normally dealing with with audio. So basically, it's one of those things that makes me paranoid. Okay, let's see what you have to say. Um, uh, no, sorry if I scared you. I want to talk about what happened. <laughs> Yoshiko? <laughs> she won't even look at me. Maybe she's still in shock from the incident? Or does she treat Kurumi like this all the time? Hey, Yoshiko, can we talk? Absolutely not. I will not speak to you. I told you it'd be this way, huh? As I've said before, I refuse to even look at you. Please, go away. She really hates Kurine. She hates everyone. A reason why? I better leave for now. Okay, next room. Oh, hello, Kurine. Is something the matter? Huh? She's actually willing to talk. She's on good yeah, it's the whole time. invisible girls stick together sort of thing. Oh, great timing. And I forgot I to turn that, the timer on. Just happened. You mean to practice for a role? You did say you wish to play a detective someday. That's amazing, Kurene. You truly are a thespian. Right. So, there's something that's bothering me. What is it? I just handle the costumes, but is there something you want to know about them? Maybe you think the actors on stage could have hidden poison in their costumes. No, sorry. That'd be impossible. Why do you say that? Because I reviewed both costumes in the wings right before the performance started. If they were carrying anything, I would have noticed then. But what about after you checked? Like if they'd gone to the restroom or somewhere else? Then I would check again. Besides, both of them were in the wings the whole time. Oh, really? Though, they were performing the whole time, so I haven't checked their costumes since the play began. Well, if they were here the whole time, they couldn't go grab the poison. If that's the case, it would have been difficult for Warana or Karin to bring poison on stage. Okay, another clue. By the way, Kurine, I still need to organize the costumes here. If you're free, could you help me out? It's hard to do it alone. Sorry. And what are you doing, Shinigami? Are you just trying to use the force on those on those outfits? I guess you don't want to talk to me. I'm sorry for bothering you while you're busy. I'll be waiting. Do you want something? I'm busy right now. She's so cold. She refuses to speak to Everyone's me. so catty here. Um Still in the middle of cleaning up. Can you not touch anything? Oh, s sorry. Okay. Yeah, let's go get yelled at some more. What are you doing here? Go away! Uh, hold on. I just wanted to... Just by being here, you're a nuisance! Don't you get that? Fine. 
She really hates Corinne. All of these girls hate each other. Karuni was right. These two really don't get along. None of these girls get along. It's draining just pretending to be Corinne. I wonder if she's not affected by all this. That was close. I almost ran into Corinne. But I need to check inside. I'll just wait for her to leave. Okay, uh... Can we do anything by running around the other side? Okay. I don't think that guy's gonna let us go. Anything from you? What is it? Oh, Kurone, it's you. Um. I told you to keep your head down and stay away. Did I? Did I? With everything going on, I'm getting yes. worried too. Okay, uh, I don't think she's gonna go to the the restroom. Okay, yeah, we already went to this one. So what's gonna trigger her to leave? Kurune should be here. I have to wait for her to leave before going in. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I think it's just more generic. Okay. What what am I supposed to do here? Room. Okay, we already talked to you. Um. Yeah. Anything? <sighs> yeah, we've well, talked to you. We already talked to you. How do we get you to leave? How do we get you to leave? Trune should be here. I have to wait for her to leave before going in. Okay. What, what am I missing out on? Okay. Let's check out some other room. Let's check out this room again. Kurene, you help me organize the costumes? Help organize the costumes? Wait, if I can use her to my advantage. Ah, <sighs> taking advantage of a high school girl. You've really hit rock bottom. Uh, uh. Well, Help me. I wanted to have a little chat with you, too. Yeah, sure. Okay, ah! Okay. Come get me from the staff room later. Well, I'll help out later. So, can you grab me from the staff room later? Let count to 100 in your head. I'll be done with what I need to do by then. Alright. Well... I'll start counting now. One, two. I better leave right now. And then we hide. Yeah, we can trick. I counted to 100, Karine. Huh? What? 
What's going on? I doubt we probably traumatized Kurone. We probably made her think that she's crazy. All right, good. I'd better check the staff room while I can. Okay, figured that out. Let's take a break. Okay. Kurone's locker. It's a club locker. Kurone's name tag is on it. It doesn't seem to be locked. This Kurone gal seems the type who'd booby trap her locker. <laughs> What's this? It looks like eye drops. There are so many of them though. Some for red eyes and for dry eyes. Is this something Kurune uses? Sensitive uses? eyes! It doesn't seem like there's anything else of interest. Okay, what well, you have to say? No, you have nothing. Oh, Kurune. When did you get here? This reminds me. Thank you for what you did. Uh, for what, again? You know, how you inspired me with the presentation on stage. Uh, uh, oh, for that one scene, right? You are such a good amnesiac. You have a knack for playing along with no memory. Yeah, the part with the overlapping spotlights after the glasses get shuffled, it expresses how the two characters' fates are intertwined. It was all thanks to you that we decided to go with this presentation. Karine. Why don't you take over stage direction for our next performance? Yeah, that might be a good idea. Just to confirm. I was the one who suggested the lighting presentation on the glasses? Yeah? What's wrong? You're acting kind of strange today. No, I'm not. Okay, production manager's testimony. Hey, do you have a minute? You can hear me, can't you? She's ignoring me. I guess she's not gonna talk. Okay, one more person. It's a club locker. Hey, that's not you. Huh? We talked about it at an earlier meeting. People took makeup without permit. Please. Well, frankly, I don't think that Karen's gonna be needing that makeup where she's going. Two theater club members are whispering to each other. Maybe this Kurine disguise has made me less conspicuous. So, who do you think killed Cotton? It has to be Warana, right? Totally. It's gotta be her. She can never read the room, you know? Like, she doesn't see the other members as people. We're all just stepping stones to her. She thinks she's the main protagonist or something. She basically treats everyone like side characters. I know what you mean. She wouldn't think twice about killing people. They're talking about Warana behind her back. The theater club really is on edge all the time. But even if Warana was the culprit, how did she get cut in to drink the poison? Well, it's gotta be at that one part. The part of the script where Warana gets closer to the shelf? Oh, right after the blackout. It's the scene where she gets the plate, right? She could have secretly snuck in some real poison and added it to the glass or wine bottle. That's it. Warana is totally the culprit. The scene where Warana approaches the shelf. Yes, it is pretty suspicious. Could she have added the poison then? In the upside down glass on the shelf? Hmm? I guess there's not much else we can find in the staff room. We better leave before Kurine comes back. That should be enough. Okay, maybe that's all the investigator I can do. Okay, let's end it off. That's all the information I can gather while disguised as Kurine. Kurine seems a bit eccentric, but she doesn't draw a lot of attention to herself. I was able to get some information thanks to that. Kurine was focused on production this time. She was thinking about the lights presentation. The lights were managed properly during the play. It doesn't seem like she had a chance to use any poison. I was able to gather more intel by disguising myself as those three, but I still don't have any definitive evidence that proves who the culprit is. Look, I honestly don't think it's any of them. I think it's really just some fifth party, because really, just they're all so paranoid that basically none of them would strike out. 
because basically they all just don't want to be the next target. Basically, one of them dies, the uh, the remaining survivors are going to be even more focused. I won't get much further just thinking about it, so I should go to Desuhiko for now. That and just, it was so random. Basically, it was so random, as if basically whoever did it was just doing it just for the sake of wiping en any of the two of them out, basically. Um, excuse me. Where's the teacher who was here earlier? Oh, she wasn't feeling well and went to the administrative office. The same teacher keeps going back to the restroom, too. Maybe it's food poisoning. I see. Thank you. The office? It's the meat steaks. A time like this. Well, De Desuhiko is feeling drained. Documents? This is... They're pamphlets for the performances in Theater Club. They really go all out for this stuff. There are, se there are sections about today's show and the club members, but none that are related to this case. Maybe I can find some clues elsewhere. D Desuhiko? What happened? Oh, it's you, Yuma. Sorry, I need a break. I started getting dizzy, so uh, I ran in here to get away from everyone. I try to retrieve my disguise tools, but I can't. I'm at my limit. I can't move. You're that fatigued? Yeah. Now that I think about it, well, this is the longest I've ever stayed in a disguise. Sorry for making you go through so much trouble. I don't worry about it, man. I got to lean on a girl's shoulder on the way here, so really, I should be thanking you. I got plenty of good sniffs in. <laughs> of course you would be sniffing the hair. Of course you'd want to sniff the hair, Desuiko. The more he talks, the less likable he gets. On the contrary, he brings amusement to the game. So, how'd it go? Any trouble investigating? About that, I gathered some information, but I'm lacking something more definitive. Everyone has something suspicious about them, so I don't know who the culprit is yet. Speaking of which, the peacekeepers mentioned a past incident that happened at this school. A past incident? You know, the one with Kurumi's best friend six months ago? The girl who fell from the school's roof and died. The peacekeepers want to pin Kurumi with a murder motive for that incident. They're gonna twist the truth into something that's convenient for them. At this rate, Kurumi will... He'll save her, won't you? Hero. I'm... No hero, but if they want to distort the truth, then as a detective, I can't let it slide. <laughs> and that's how you see it? You're already a hero, Yuma. There's still time if you hurry. Go and seek the truth that hasn't reared its head yet. But how? The guy snooping around about the first incident is a chubby peacekeeper. Get information out of him and figure out what they're trying to suppress. They won't tell me so easily. Hold on. There is one way it could be possible. This guy is a peacekeeper. As Martina, use her, use Halara's fort, and disguise himself as the chubby peacekeeper. That's it. I can get that information if I'm disguised as Martina, the vice director of the peacekeepers. Looks like you now understand the power of disguises. Well then, let's get started. On second thought. Sorry, I don't have any energy left to disguise you. Huh? I think I'll recover if I take a nap. What do I do? There's no time to wait for Desuhiko. I need to find Kurumi immediately. It'll be too late if I wait until the peacekeepers end their investigation. But I can't force Desuhiko to do a half-hearted disguise. It'd be way too dangerous. Well, why don't we get his ability? You know, that way we can get him into the labyrinth, and then basically he can start creeping on Shinigami. What am I supposed to do? Uh, aren't you forgetting about a certain ability? Oh, that's right! But what? Don't yell out of nowhere, the peacekeepers will find us! Hey, Desuhiko, can you lend me a hand for a little while? Uh, lend a hand? Yeah, I just need you to hold my hand for a bit. Yeah, the one thing I'm thinking about, I mean... Back on the Amaterasu Express, we didn't hold Zenge's hand, yet we were able to see his ability in action. We and I'm pretty sure as heck we didn't touch, we didn't touch Apex's hand, and yet we were seeing his ability. Basically, there was no willingness with those two. Yet we were seeing their abilities, no problem. Are you serious? But 
Right now, you're disguised like a girl. What if I start to have feelings? Desuhiko, you already have feelings. Now's not the time for jokes. Hurry, please. Uze was joking, Yuma. Jeez, what's going on? What is this weird feeling? The blood is, is rushing this... beneath his belt. Love? No. It's a long story, but it's the forte I gained in exchange for my memories. Just holding hands will allow me to use another person's forte. Are you serious? You actually have a forte? Let me borrow your disguise tools. How does it look? Wow! That's the perfect disguise? Yeah, and then basically, yeah, and then knowing Yuma's luck, he runs into Yom to Yomi in the hallway. Hey, girl! Will I record a tape? Yeah, and, then, and then Yuma gets dragged off. Did you really do this, Yuma? You never told me you had such an amazing power. I'm surprised there was a peacekeeper uniform in your bag. You're so well prepared, Desuhiko. Wait, but we're holding hands. How would you put your arm through the sleeve? Anyway, the disguise is over, so we can let go now. You said a chubby peacekeeper was investigating the past incident? I'm going to go talk to him. And with that perfect disguise, there's so much more you can do. Right. You stay here and rest. I'll resume the investigation. Yeah, and then basically run to the real Martina with the disguise. Yoma, Yomi's there. He's like, I don't care if there's two. Double the trouble. What other spots there's no reason to go this way. Better check elsewhere. Okay. Okay, let's see where let's see here Karen's weakness. She just likes the sounds and flashes of thunder and lightning and is quick to hide in a room at the mere stint of rumbling. We frankly I don't think we'll need Karen's weakness, considering that well, she's dead. Aiko is cheerful full of energy. She has met she has many friends. She enjoyed transforming into a completely different person through acting and wanted to try many different roles. Okay. Yeah, my guess is that we have to find the chubby peacekeeper. Oh. Students. Hmm. Does it seem like the theater club uses the studio? Can't learn anything. Off the first room. Hmm. Okay. No relation. Anything from you? Okay, can we go in this classroom? Oh! Some, de some dejected looking students are discussing in classroom 1 1. They might have some information. Let's find out what they know. Doesn't seem like they know anything about the case. Let's try somewhere else. Huh? Oh, you must be the peacekeeper's vice director. Wh what are you doing at the school? There could be trouble if someone gets too close to the investigation. I should try to keep her out of it. You. I'm inspecting the school as a precaution. Keep quiet and stay out of the way. All right, my apologies. I might have got a little reward there. Okay, I don't think we can do anything in there. Nothing. Okay, you're the chubby peacekeeper. No, you are not. Hey, you have anything to say? Hello, Hello Vice Mar Director Mart Martina. Is there anything I can do for you? Hey. Yes, actually, I need you to do a little digging into a past incident. In that case, I think the man may... I think that man may have the documents you need. Indeed. You know, the one you always get mad for hovering around you, uh... I see. Always, huh? Do you know where he is? Yes. Well, I saw him outside the school building a while ago. He might still be around there somewhere. I see. I'll go take a look then. Yeah, though frankly, Martina, she wouldn't have anything to worry about. Basically, one, she would have no, she would probably have no problem just kicking him and stomping him, and not to mention just then you get Yomi, who would basically just snap his neck for just even looking at it. my queen. I will snap his neck. It will get split in two like a melon. You know. 
chemistry, chemistry rep room. It's possible something was taken out of here. Pardon me, Miss Martina, but do you have some business in the chemistry rep room? Mm. Still, seems she's already decided to check this place out, so I better not arrest suspicion. <laughs> no, I was just checking the lock. We don't want students getting in and making a mess. Keep an eye out and ensure that there are no suspicious students. Yes, of course. Okay, what's with this crowd? For now. Wait, is that a memory right there? Oh, it looks like there's a memory on the counter. Okay. Aww. We gotta check everything. It's my motto. Gotta check everything. Leave no stone unturned. Hey. You have a moment? I'm looking for someone. Yes. Why, well, Stroke to Martino? Who are you searching for? Ooh. Crap, I don't know his name. I need to phrase this carefully. The chubby one. You know, the one who investigated the incident here a little while back? Ask uh, him? He said he was hanging at the gym. Um, uh, I'm aware he's something of a handful, but could you at least remember his name? Right. I think I'll think about it. Okay, we can't go up the stairs. There's no reason going this way. Okay, let's see if we can find the gym. Or room. Multi purpose room. That should be it. Okay, we've already went there. Aha, here we go. Sure, you have time to be taking detours. Huh? Mr. Martino, what are you doing here? You. I'm in need of the files for that bastard. Do you know who has um, them? No, I'm afraid I don't. I see. Ah, uh, someone else. Okay, where's the gym? Okay, this is probably the guy. You there. Do you have a moment? Vice Director Martino! Oh, well, his name is just Chubby Peacekeeper. Punishment. Anyway, were you the one investigating the Ico case half a year ago? Yes, that's correct. Is it time for my punishment? I don't even want to know what this guy's into. I need to confirm a few things. Can you tell me what you've discovered so far? Gladly. <clears throat> Ico's body was discovered behind the school building in the flower bed after class. She was bleeding from an injury to her head. This is believed to be the cause of death. The body was not wearing shoes on either foot. The shoes were then discovered on the roof of the school building, set together neatly. This is why it was deemed a suicide via jumping off the roof. Uh, uh, here is a photo from the scene. Yeah, even though these shoes look like they were in the they were on the ground, they were on the dirt. Who first discovered the body? In the mud. Let's see. It was a student named Cotton, another theater club member. Huh? Cotton? She heard something fall and went to check the flower bed. There she discovered Iko on the ground. That is what she testified. Iko was considered the star of the theater club, but apparently she worried about her future goals. And by the way, this is the last photo of Aiko prior to her death. Yep. Okay, it's kind of weird. She kind of resembles Kamaru a bit. So this is Aiko. I see. Thank you for the report. Continue your investigation. Yes, ma'am. Oh, but... What about my punishment? No. <laughs> yes. I'm scared right now. What's with the punishment thing? Anyway, I got what I came for. I should keep investigating. But where to go? <sighs> uh, uh, hey, what are you doing? Cut it out! Why are you getting in the way of my investigation? Oh wait. Chemistry lab. Besides, where would she even get poison? 
Ms. Martina. Sorry, this sorry. This was discovered in the chemistry lab. That's right. The bottle of poison used in the murder was found there. <laughs> well, I'm here anyway. Might as well check it out. Okay. What other spots are suspicious? Okay, I can't I can't go back there. If we use this. Okay, this is not memory. Was there something insufficient about our investigation? Had you told me, I would have verified myself. Thank you for your diligence. Tell me, do you have the results from testing for poison? Yes, as I've reported to you already. The poison was only found on the victim's glass. Only the victims? What about the bottle of the other glass? None. No traces have been found on those. And as you've instructed, this information is currently being kept from the official report. I see. Good work. The poison was only on Cotton's glass? How is that possible? Well, if it was a fifth party, then basically just trying to take them both, take one of them out, you know, basically, uh, hey. We want to take one down, one down better than none down. Okay, there we go. Amethyst. Okay, we got Halora. Gumshoe Gab. Okay, look at the microscopic world. Okay. Going against the big guy. Okay, probably a tower somewhere in the city. Okay. Probably a library is where we're gonna find. Where we're, is where we'll find basically an emerald one. Their eyedroppers used in the lab, but these still look new. Okay, anything, anything. Okay, we check that out. This is the bottle of poison discovered by the peacekeepers that was used for the murder. They've taken it out for the investigation. Did they put it back because they were done? The report mentioned the bottle's lid was unsealed. The bottle is too big to easily conceal. Taking this to the feeder hall would attract attention. If that's the case, Maybe its contents were poured into another container. According to the label on this bottle, this chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Oh, there's a more detailed description about it here. Once opened, oxidation cannot be stopped. Transferring to another sealed container will not prevent this process. Okay, good to note. Okay. Wait, there's a paintbrush near the chemical shelf. The tip of the brush is wet. What is this? Okay, thank you. There's probably not much else that can be checked in the chemistry lab, but it sure is convenient being disguised as Martina. The peacekeepers keep telling me everything. Yeah, because they're afraid of getting stomped, or in the case of the chubby one, he wants to get stomped. I should have taken this disguise from the start. Maybe I should keep investigating in this form. Yeah, although if we're inheriting this power, then we're probably going to be inheriting the side effects. Hmm. What else should I look at? Good uh, again? Okay. I'm starting Okay, I'm kind of wondering how long this investigation is going to go on for. The staff room? I think I already checked everything in there. Okay, anyways. Just, I don't know what this, what's going to happen next. I don't really know how long we're going to be investigating. So, instead of trying to do everything in this one episode, I think that now would be a good time to end things off. Anyways, I really appreciate it that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back for the next week. Like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do as you want. Without, see you next time. Bye.